Let's pray. Father, we bless your name and we thank you so much for the privilege that you've given us to pray. It is such a privilege to know that you are God and that you change us not. We are grateful. And so we ask in the name of Jesus that you will forgive us of our sins and trespasses against you. And Lord, we ask that you would remember those names that were called, those who are sick in the hospital and at a home shut in, those that are going through that hour of bereavement, we ask that you will comfort them as only you can. And Father, we pray in the name of Jesus for greater St. Matthew as we get ready to hear what you have to say to the church. We pray for our pastor as he get ready to teach that you would give him understanding, give him clarity of the word, anoint him afresh and let him, God, speak to your people which you would have uh, your people to hear. And then, God, I pray for the people that those who are in the building and even online, those that have an ear to hear, let them hear what the Spirit has to say to the church. And God, no matter what's going on in our society, no matter who's in the White House, the good news is you still occupy the throne. And because you change us not, we're going to lift our hands in praise. We're going to glorify you because you are worthy of all of our praise. And so, God, we say thank you, thank you, thank you for Jesus, who is the reigning king. And we thank you for the Holy Spirit who indwells your people. It's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Afternoon, Greater St. Matthew. I love y'all, and guess what? Y'all can't do nothing about it. Y'all, let me tell you something before we start, and Kenneth just kind of step on my thunder. Y'all see this right here? This is when you voted. And this is a sticker that says, I voted. But guess what? You voted, and some people are down, Sister Palms, because who they wanted didn't win. Either way. But let me tell you something. Brother Basil said, he said, God is reigning. I don't care who you're having in the White House. God is on high, and he's taking care. So, Brother Blair, people fought and wanted to vote for everything, but God is always, always, when we couldn't vote in the 30s and poll tax, God was always in control. So I'm asking you if you're down or whatever else, I don't know what your political affiliation, but just know that God is going to take care of us. You hear me? If you have that, you can smile today, Charles. You don't care what the election says. Because you know he's in control. Amen? All right, I'm through with that public service announcement. Because <laughs> we just going to smile because we serve a great God over here, you know? I want to talk to y'all. Um, I've talked with us, and sometimes we know some things we've heard about them, and sometimes, Brother Ray, we've heard them all our lives. I told them that sometimes we don't believe in things. Some people don't believe in Daniel in the lion's den or God is good because they heard it from when they was little. You know what I'm saying? But it becomes a cliche. And uh, the thing that I said is, as this church, is one thing that's going to believe, as I said Sunday, I said that, first of all, we're going to make sure we know the direction we're going, Brother Blair, and then that we heal and that everybody's going the same direction, which is God's direction. Not mine, God's direction. And there are some things, some basics that sometimes we say, you got to have faith. But Charles, when I was little, my mom would say, you got to have faith. I didn't know what that meant. And sometimes we take things for granted, Ms. Pauline. So I just want to make sure, and in the beginning of the new year, besides our campaign, I'm going to talk about the basics, the word, God, Jesus. We, don't, we just can't take these things for granted that everybody understands. You know, and if you do understand, that's good. You're smart, you're ahead of the class, and you'll stay there while everybody catches up. Amen? But it's something I want to ask you today. I want to ask you, as a church, I told y'all there are some things I'm concerned about. I don't want us to be, to go around saying we have a lot of members. That ain't nothing. We have a lot of members. I hear people say all the time, we have 5,000 members. We have 12,000 members. But as I said that Sunday, they're paper mache, Miss Angel. They fold like a cheap tent when anything happens. They can't save nobody, and when something happens, their toe hurts. They're ready to give up and hang them, uh, as Reb you say, blow their brains out because they can't handle anything that comes. But if you're stronger, I'd rather have 20 soldiers with me. I want more of y'all, okay? <laughs> I want y'all to stick around. But I want some strong, we need some strong soldiers on the battlefield 
you know, strong soldiers on the battlefield. We need to love everybody else. And one thing that we need to make sure, y'all, is that we have faith. Faith. And faith is shown many times in the Bible, but I want to come to it from an, an angle that you, uh, many of your Bible scholars, y'all did it, but some people don't do that. They'll t talk about a uh, Abraham, but sometimes they generally go to Genesis, right? But I want to talk about how it comes from the new faith. But faith is important, you know? So two questions I want to ask you before I start. Ask yourself if you want faith. Do you want faith? Go ahead and say Matthew. Besides that, Brother Banks, do you want strong faith? Let me ask somebody. I'm just going to ask by, uh, just somebody mentioned to me. I don't know if we have the microphone. Somebody tell me why they want faith. Talk to me. Somebody tell me why they tell me why, why they need faith. Nell, do you have a microphone? I want to make sure you hear, that everybody hear this good stuff, so wait till Nelda gets to you. Anybody want to talk about why they need faith? Okay, Miss Angel. And, and Miss Pauline, I'm going to come to you next. First of all, without faith, Hebrews 11 and 6 says, it is impossible to please God. And I want to please God in every arena of my life. And I, faith in him, that's the only hope we have. Miss Angel, you better preach. And you better stop teaching my lesson. <laughs> That's basically what I was going to say. Without faith, we can't please God. Amen. And so we, if we're his soldiers and we want to please him, we got to have faith. Come on. To do what we are set here to do, to please him, not others, him. Yeah. Amen. Y'all give them a hand. I appreciate y'all volunteering and speak to me. Y'all, we have to do that we have to have faith as a church and I and, and you know what y'all we have a lot of faith because y'all know we've come through so much we've come through so much as, as a church but I'm sitting up here smiling I have joy because I know what he's done for us brother boys what he died and to come in this church what they've gone through the last two or three years five years you know and just to see that church full and people in here praising God I got a call from another pastor um, two pastors and said they saw some of our stuff on social media and said, man, I like what's going on on now. I'm not doing it for man, but I'm just saying people can see that we are standing. You know what I'm saying? We shouldn't have to say, hey, look at us, we standing. I can't hear what you're saying from what I'm seeing. So we have to stand. So that's what I want to tell you. So I want to talk to you guys about faith and we're going to do it um, from a different angle. And we're going to have only four things. I'm going to try to get out here. If we have to go next week, we'll do it. Uh, I'm not going to keep y'all on to the football game. Come on tomorrow. I'm going to get y'all out of here. But faith is an important thing that distinguishes the type of church we are. As I told you, we can have the most bodies in the seat, Miss Angel, but that don't make us strong. Miss Angel, you can go to a church where they all week believe and say, look, it's a lot of us, but that don't mean anything just because you're there. You know, the biblical definition, as Miss Angel said, is one we all know and have heard of. The substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. That's an awesome definition. But you know the one I like too? I even like the one that's in the Merriam Dictionary. You know what it says? It says, uh, complete trust. You hear me? Complete trust in confidence in someone or something. Complete, not sometimes. Well, he can't handle this, Miss Pauline. This one a little bit tougher than he's done. He brought me out of the last one. But if you have complete and total trust, you know that no matter what you go through, he will come and see about you. You hear me? That means no matter your circumstance, you know God will come through. You know what? I have my wife. I know that when I went to the hospital, she was there every night for me. And I can count on her to be there. My brother, my sister, but they're not immortal, Miss Angel. I, I know no matter what, he'll stick closer to me than a friend, no matter what situation. When Nikki can't get there, or my mother can get there, they can't get there now. But I know God has me, and I can be complete and total trust in him. And I don't have to have a plan, B, C, or D, because I know he will come ahead. Because I know he was going to do just what he told me he was going to do. He would do, as that song said, he will do just what he said. God said it, he meant it, whatever, believe it. Brother Phillips, God will do. Just what he said. And I don't care how tough it is. No, God, God will step in on time. Anybody ever been going through a tough time and know how you make it? But God stepped in right on time. He'll do it. Let me give you an example. If y'all bear with me. Anybody, I don't know if anybody here worked for the post office, but imagine two letters being dropped in the same mailbox. Y'all hear me? Two, mail, two letters 
One letter is, listen to me, Miss Angel, Sister White, one letter is impeccably dressed. Has a border, has your name already on the envelope and everything, beautiful. You have all the postage stamp, but it has, but it's not, I'm sorry, it has everything on there, but it has no postage stamp on there. Beautiful letter, Brother Ray. But then you have one that's beat up, been through the mud, and everybody's stepping on it and, and everything, drove on it, but it has postage on there. Which one of those letters going to be developed? Uh, the one with the postage. You hear me? I don't care what it looks like. And, 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 and in our Christian life, faith is that stamp. You hear me? Faith is that stamp. What God does, good does God look for? He don't care what you came from or where y'all pastor told us. It's not where you're coming from. It's where you're going. And you ask me how I can have strong faith. So let's look at a character in the Bible who had strong faith and let's see what his life can teach us. How many know the Bible is an awesome thing? We meet in the night, Dean Hayward, his thing is, the life is the best love letter ever written. <laughs> Let me tell you, if you believe as he believes, Abraham, we can achieve what he achieved. We're going to go to Romans chapter 4 to look at that faith, okay? That passage of scriptures is written to encourage us. If you remember, when God called Abraham, he said, through you, all the nations of the world are going to be blessed. Now, how many know here by show of hands, if God says something is going to happen, it's going to happen? Don't fool me now. Y'all not fool me. If he says it, that settles it, right? Okay. God wanted Abraham's descendants, the Jewish nation, to be a channel of blessing. See, God doesn't bless you to sit down and revel in what you've done, brother. Ray. I don't care what you've done. You can look what I've done. I don't, God, even if you say God bless him, your job ain't just to sit down and do that, you know. But he does that to make you a blessing to others as well. You have to be a blessing to others. And I see so many of you around here said, I helped sister so-and-so, I fed sister so-and-so. That's what we're supposed to do to be a blessing to others. And he'll do that by you having faith. Now, I ask you why faith is important. And um, Hebrews 11 and 6, somebody get that for me. Somebody get that for me. Today, just to let y'all know, I'm going to be coming out of the NIV for this study today. I use the King James and New American Standard. I'll be NIV, but read for what you want to. Anybody have Hebrews 11 and 6? Well, Hebrews 11 and 6. I'll read from the New Living Translation, so it might be a little different in your Bible. And it is impossible to please God without faith. Anyone who wants to come to him must believe that God exists and that he rewards those who sincerely seek him. Hallelujah. Not just only believing God exists, but believing that he'll be faithful. You know when you call on him, he'll step in. And if you ever always hear me say that when he comes in, uh, 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 Brother Banks, I go in for my kidney twice a year. Brother Banks, says, Bank, I don't know what that report is going to say. But I do know if it says something that I want, Brother Blair, that I'm excited to hear, I know God is on the other side of that diagnosis. And he's going to be there for me, no matter what he's going on. That's the faith. You know that you don't know the report. You don't know what it looked like, Miss Angel, but you know he will be with me through the thick and thin. And I can trust and I can believe in him. What does that, I want to ask you something, what does that, uh, that scripture mean to you? Can somebody ask me that? Walking by faith and vows not only believing that God, but believing he will be faithful. What does that mean to you? Anybody want to comment on that? Anybody want to comment on 11.6? Brother Phillips, you read it. What does it mean to you? Well, they, they, they trust in the government more than they do God. Because, you mm. know, sometimes, you know, whenever we get the, our Social Security checks, and, you know, we trust it's going to be there for us, you know. But <laughs> we have to also trust in God that he's going to always be there, and he's going to be more faithful to you than the United States government. And, and, and what I'm saying here, I mean, if you don't have faith to believe in God, then you just existing for no reason at all. Come on. Because God is the backbone that holds us all together. 
And having faith is like the glue that keeps him glued to us. Hallelujah. That's what it means to me. Ooh, I'm going to talk about the link. I told you about uh, the ligament Sunday. We're going to talk about that link. Hallelujah. Also, let me tell you that if you please God, it doesn't matter whom else you please. Let me tell you something. I'm in a position um, um, where that comes in <laughs> into play. And the way to please God is to believe God. Matter of fact, if you can't even be saved, if you don't have faith to believe in God, I mean, don't you hear people talking about God, 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 Lord, have mercy. They don't even know what the inside of a church or a Bible looks like. <laughs> you ain't going to get no prayer through. If you don't have any faith in what God is. Somebody uh, read uh, Ephesians 2, 8 and 9, if you will. Let me know when you get it so Mike can bring the microphone to you. We have somebody in the back. Let me let you know, y'all, when I do Bible study, it's an all-inclusive. You will be participating and responding. <laughs> Ephesians 2, 8 and 9. For by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourself. It is the gift of God, not of work, lest any man should boast. Thank you, Ludie. Anyone who puts his faith in the Lord Jesus Christ can be saved. And faith is what enables us to live the Christian life. You ain't do nothing anyway. And don't you ever get, as I said Sunday, don't ever try to be Mr. Big Stuff. Because you ain't do nothing anyway. So, so some folks are stumbling and falling while others are victorious. Have you seen that? Some people falling all over. And how come I can't get it together? And they say they, and they market, they say they love the Lord. It, it don't add up. Some are overcomers and some are, some are overcome. And, and why can we overcome? Let me have one more scripture for you. Somebody read 1 John 5 and 4. If you're doing, the first, if you're doing John, uh, right after Luke, you, you, you're not going far enough. 1 John 5 and 4. That's towards the end of the Bible. If you're in the beginning, you, you ain't going far enough. 1 John 5 and 4. 1 John 5 and 4, NIV, for everyone born of God overcomes the world. This is the victory that has overcome the world, even our faith. Mm. Our faith, we've over, it's, it's already set in place, Charles. When you were born into that family, you can overcome. You're saved. We talk man to man about the presence, we talk about uh, the presence of sin. You know what I'm saying? We don't leave it yet, but it don't have power over us. We got the victory. You know you got the victory? In Jesus, because of your faith. Faith convinces us things that we cannot see. For some people, heaven is not real. For some people, it's as if they were already there. You know, uh, let me ask somebody one more thing. Uh, show of hands, how many know heaven is real? Anybody want to tell me why, how they know it? You have your faith in that, right? The word said God is Faith, right? You got people running around, I can't see it, so I don't believe it. I was like, you go and you go and go with that. Eternity is a long time if that's the route you want to go. You know what I'm saying? But two things, let me tell you, some people feel that they have a hunch, or like that, uh, if y'all allow me to say that theologian Frankie, Frankie Beverly, <laughs> they say he have, they have happy feelings, <laughs> that everything is going to be okay. That's what he say. Frankie Beverly say happy feelings. Uh, that's how you feel that thing is going to be good. Not your faith, but I just feel good today. Uh, you are optimistic. I told you I was on a bad baseball team, and I got our teeth kicked in every night. And I came home and said, Daddy, Daddy, we almost won. We only lost by 10. I was optimistic. That's not how you're going to survive because you're optimistic. You have to have faith. You hear me? Some people have the feeling that God can. Some people have the faith that God will, though. I like what Run Writer, he said, strong faith. Listen, y'all. Is deaf to doubt, is deaf to doubt, is blind to the impossibilities. But listen, as you said the word, it said faith takes God at his word. I don't care what it is, what's going on, Sister William, God said it, I'm going to believe it. Hallelujah. So when we believe as Abraham believed, we'll receive some amazing things as he did. Listen to this, though. If you think you have to be a perfect life, have to have a perfect life, you will find that Abraham made some, look at this, y'all, industrial strength mistakes. He wasn't perfect by any stretch of the imagination. You remember? But the New Testament never mentions words about his mistakes. That's why I like going to the New Testament. We're not Jewish, 
for the most part, but we're Gentile, but the Lord has. He's forgiven everything that you've gone through. Miss Angel, you didn't get it right today. First John 1 and 9 tells you. And we serve a true friend, Miss Polly. He ain't gonna be like, you remember last week you cussed that man out. You woke up again and you got another chance to get it right. You hear me? We're flawed individuals like they were uh, in the Bible, but God did some amazing things through them. Moses, Noah, all of them, he did individual, with flawed individuals. We're flawed individuals, right? So there's nothing, Brother Blatt, that he can't do through us, you hear me? If you have the faith in him. That's why I like the New Testament account. It never mentions anything about his mistakes. Do you hear me? And what God remembered Abraham for wasn't his failure, but his faith. In that scripture. And as I talked earlier, it's the stamp of faith. Remember the faith, the stamp? It's the stamp of faith that God is looking for. So if you want a strong helping, I know third can't given coming up, you're gonna need second and third and fourth helpings. But if you want a strong helping of faith, there are some things that are true about Abraham that need to be true about your faith. So we're gonna look at those, let's read our title scripture today, and we're gonna go through our five and we're gonna get you home. What we don't finish, we'll delve into next week. Y'all, I looked at NIV because there were some points, uh, Brother Banks, this is Bradley, that I just, that were awesome. I mean, that um, when I read that scripture, you know, there's many versions you can read, but this, it really rang home through me to NIV. But I want you to read, I want to read this scripture to you, okay? If, does anybody have a phone where they can switch to NIV? Carmen, you want to do, uh, Carmen, you want to read it? I want you to read um, Romans 4, 16 through 25. You can read the reading of your choice, and, uh, um, and I want you to study the whole chapter when you get home. Okay. Mm -hmm. Hush, poor Okay. This NIV, Romans 4, 16 through 25, Therefore, the promise comes by faith, so that it may be by grace and may be guaranteed to all Abraham's offspring, not only to those who are of the law, but also to those who have the faith of Abraham. He is the father of us all. Stop right there, Mitch. Okay. Guarantee all of Abraham's offspring. You remember what he said? The number of people that he will be the father of, that's all of us. You hear me? Not just whoever you are, everyone. All of us. Go ahead, Mitch. He's the father of us all. As it is written, I have made you a father of many nations. He is our father in the sight of God, in whom he believed the God who gives life to the dead and calls into being things that were not. Stop right there. The God who gives life to the dead and calls into being things that were not. Is that powerful? Mm. <laughs> Meets my cousin. She ain't gonna mind me stopping her off. Right. <laughs> Go ahead, Meets. Against all hope, Abraham in hope believed and so became the father of many nations just as it had been said to him, so shall you, your offspring be. Without weakening in his faith, he faced the fact that his body was as good as dead since he was about 100 years old and, the Sarah's womb, and that Sarah's womb was also dead. Stop that, Beaches. Okay. Listen to me, y'all. Miss Angel, I can look at you, Miss Angel. I know. I listen to you. Unless you got me fooled, you know how good God yes. is. Sister Quilla, I'm looking at you right now. When there were some dark days I talked to you, said God is an awesome God and he's going to come and see about him. But the key, the common denominator is that we look at him, not our circumstances. We had a founding pastor that says, keep the blinders on. Mm -hmm. Don't look to your right. What it says in Joshua 1, do not look to your right, to your left. Because Satan is everywhere. He wants to put you off with the situation. But if you keep your blinders on, Jehoshaphat said, our eyes are on you. If you keep your eyes on God in the circumstance, even in the midst of what you're going through, it's going to be, how many know it's going to be okay if you put your eyes on him? It'll be okay. He'll take care of you. Listen to this, y'all. Listen, that's why I want to read this. It says, without weakening his faith, he faced the fact that his body was good as dead. This body can't do nothing. I ain't making no babies. How you telling me that I'm going to do this? This body is dead. So Spong, he said he knew that this body was dead, was good as dead. And look on that, it says since he was about 100 years old and that Sarah's womb was almost dead. Okay, well if one of our bodies is working, we might have a shot. <laughs> 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 
But Brother Blair, we need, Lord, we need to give you something to work with. You know what I'm saying? But Brother Blair, he didn't look at the circumstance. He looked at the situation. That Sarah's womb, it says, so Sarah y'all, without weakening in his faith. That's what we have to do. You hear me? I know your circumstances. Let me just go ahead. Listen to what he said. Yet he did not waver through unbelief regarding the promise of God, but was strengthened in his faith and gave glory to God. Hallelujah. Being fully persuaded that God had power to do what he had promised. Stop. Y'all, If I said it six times, so it'll be seven times. If he said it, that settles it. God has promises in the Bible. If you lined up, you read his word, God has to do what he promised. He can't do that. I told you, I told my baby that we might go to McDonald's if I have time. But if I said, hey, we're going to get that happy meal, I had no choice. But we were going to McDonald's. And God will do what he says, Michael. You hear me? Let me just go ahead and finish the rest of that to 25. This is why it was created to him as righteousness. The words it was created to him were written not for him alone, but for also for us, to whom God will credit righteousness. For us who believe in him, who raised Jesus, our Lord, from the dead. Mm. He was delivered over to death from our sins and was raised to life for our justification. Amen. Thank you. Come on, y'all give me just a hand. <laughs> I might be able to get out of here good, okay? Um, <laughs> um, let me tell you this. The reading to number one for time. Number one, strong faith is received as a grace gift of God. And that's seen mostly in Romans 4, 16 and 17. 16 and 17. Um, therefore the promise comes by faith so that it may, may by, be by grace and may be guaranteed to all Abraham's offspring, not only to those who have the law, but to those who have the faith of Abraham. He is the father of us all. It is written, I have made you a father of many nations. He is our father in the sight of God in whom he believed, the God who gives life to the dead and calls into being things that were not. Let me tell you, we receive God's gift by having faith. It's a free gift. Did y'all know it's free? Did you know you didn't have to pay for it? You don't have to go to Walmart and say, yeah, I got some of God's grace in here. It's Christmas, it's Black Friday. Y'all got some of God's grace? You don't have to do that. It's all free to all of Abraham's descendants, Ludi. Ludi, I know you have to have a birthday, a birthday coming up, but it's free to all. You hear me? We don't have to give you that gift. That means to everyone that lives with faith like that of Abraham and believes as he did. I want you to write this down in your pad or in your notes, this definition of grace, all right? Grace is the unmerited favor. Grace is the unmerited favor and kindness of God. And read it again. And kindness of God shown to one who does not. Shown to one who does not. One more time. Shown to one who does not. Deserve it and can never earn it. To one who does never, does not deserve it and can never earn it. D, let me tell you something. I'm proud of you, man. You can go out here and holler, Jesus, I love you, Lord, and jump off this building. You just, I'm going to be like, man, you didn't have to do that. He was a good man who just made a stupid decision. You don't have to do that. You can't earn what God has for you. That grace. You can't earn God's grace and your salvation. You hear me? It's nothing that you can do, but it's unmerited favor and kindness of God. Shown to one who does not deserve it, and you can never earn it. Y'all know why I'm so excited about that, hey, Morgan? Y'all, because, Sister Banks, I might not have enough money to be able to buy it. I, I might be in a low-income bracket, but I thank God for that, that he can do that. I look at it as being born into my family. I did nothing to be born, and I didn't always do the right thing. Some of y'all been around here. Y'all saw me getting in trouble all the time. But I was born into the Booker family, and I was blessed with so many things because of who I was, but not what I did. You hear me? Not what I did. Somebody's still laughing at me because I got in trouble. Yes, yes, yes. God's words will transform you. <laughs> I said this many times in my speaking. Um, when I was in junior high, I received some benefits because of who, when I was in high school, who I was. And there was none greater than what I asked for and what I could have hoped for. When I asked my dad, and you hit many, many times for a car, and he got that car, but I didn't just get that car, Miss Pauline. He put gas in there. 
he got insurance. And we come wash it and gas it up. He gave me more than I hoped for. And guess what? I was born into that family. I didn't do it because of my goodness, how good I was. You represent the Book of Family Real Wood, I'm going to give you a car. I was his child, and he took care of me. You hear me? So can you imagine what your, holy, what, the, what, what your heavenly father would do for you? What he has done for you. He has already given his best, wouldn't you agree? He sent his only son to die for us. And there's nothing that he won't do for us, Brother Ray. Give the Lord a hand clap for that. Not me, but give the Lord a hand clap of praise for how good he is. And his mercy endureth forever, all generations. I didn't have the money. I could not have purchased what my dad purchased for me. You hear me? But he did. And let me tell you something. Sometimes we went somewhere, and Ken and Meaches, he would say, Meaches, you remember how he said ain't buying it? He would take him somewhere, and he would say, look at my, my brother. He did all that. He said, she don't know everything that I did. But sometimes we went somewhere, and he would say, here's my son. He's on the dean's list. And proceed to go down the list of things and accomplishments. And A. Maud came to my senior luncheon, and... Uh, it was like, that's my nephew. I'm proud of she came up to Beaumont. But, you know, Kenny, sometimes I felt guilty because they didn't know what I did that last night before that. <laughs> but I thank God that he still loved me and many times made old death behave. You know, but listen, I know my nature. You hear me? And I'm not alone. You know your nature. There's a sin nature. We weren't born having it all right. Again, I said, if you came out of the womb with your Bible, your miniature Bible and everything and all your little pulpit that came out of the womb and everything, you still, you still don't have it right. And you still have that nature. Do you hear me? One of my favorite movies is Gladiator. And when that movie features a, a gentleman by the name of Russell Crowe, and I could watch that movie always and forever. And it's oblivious. I'm oblivious to everything that's going around. Nikki's talking to me. And I ain't listening to nothing she say. Uh, don't tell I said that. Nothing she said. But I, I love Gladiator. But one day I found out there was a separate cut. It's called the director's cut. And on the director's cut, those are the scenes that for only for the director. And Brother, uh, Brother Banks, they were omitted from the movie that everybody saw. You know what I'm saying? Uh, the only people were able to see that was what the director wanted you to see. But let me tell you something. Anybody, let me ask you something. Anybody ever been anywhere and you know you weren't supposed to be there? Anybody ever said something that you weren't supposed to say? But God didn't make it for everybody to see. God gave us another chance with the director's cut, but yet he, he knows who we are in our nature. And he still loves it. Hallelujah, he did not release that director's cut on me. Hallelujah, because that would have been a lot to pay. But God paid it all. Jesus, how many know God paid it all for everything that you've gone through? Give the Lord a hand. Thank you, Jesus, that you didn't release that movie on my life. The people only see what the director wanted. For some people, he made old death behave when you went somewhere that you shouldn't have been. I know I ain't the only one. And I ain't ashamed of it because I know what he can do for me. And I know what he's going to do for me the rest of my life because I can depend on him. I ain't ashamed, and I know if I tell somebody, somebody else may be going through what I'm going through. I ain't ashamed to be transparent if I know what he's done for me. He told us to evangelize. How you gonna do that if you ain't got no story and you scared to tell everybody what's going on? You better let them know what God has done for you in your life. God kept you, never left you. That's why you can say GB3, I know what you used to do in your life. But that's all right. My earthly father knew before I even did those things. My heavenly father knew, and he still loves me. Look, by nature, we're totally sinful, but without Jesus, we're spiritually dead. But let's look at Ephesians 2, 1 through 6. I'm going to have y'all read that at home. You hear me? Because I want for sake of time. I want to do that. But let me tell you something. There's, no, let's read it. Ephesians 2, 1 through 6. If I need to stop, I'll stop, and we'll finish up next week. Who has Ephesians 1, 2, 1 through 6? So, so Quinn, would you? Okay. If, Ephesians 2, 1 through 6. And you he made alive who were dead in trespasses and sins, in which you once walked according to the course of the world, 
according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit and the spirit who now works in the sons of the disobedience, among whom also we all once conducted ourselves in the lusts of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature children of wrath, just as the others. But God, who is rich in mercy because of his great love with which he loves us, even when we were dead in trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. By grace, you have been saved and raised up together and made us sit together in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Thank you. But guess what? There's nothing in us that can generate that faith. Grace is not our reward for faith. What God did, he took the initiative. He reaches out and gives all sinners the, sinners the grace to have faith. It's probably something he does that said there's something greater in us that's in the world. You could not have done it by yourself. What they say down there, I, can, I think they say the song they said, uh, something got, Brother Blank, something got a hold of me. They said, I went to the river, got bad, my soul got happy, and I stayed all night. <laughs> and this song says, something, something got a hold on me. It's nothing you did. God is amazing. <laughs> God is amazing. Just as salvation is the grace gift of God, so is the faith to receive that salvation. You hear me? And as that information says late at night, but wait, there's more. He gives it to everyone, everyone. Somebody look with me, Romans 12 and 3, if you have it. Romans 12 and 3. Mike, make sure we get the microphone because we want to make sure they hear this. Hear this. Romans 12 and 3. Because of the privilege and authority God has given me, I give each of you this warning. Don't think you are better than you really are. Be honest in your evaluation of yourselves. Measuring yourself by the faith God has given us. Hallelujah. NIV says, for by this grace given me, I say to every one of you, do not think of yourself more highly than you are to Mr. Big Stuff. But rather think of yourself with sober judgment in accordance with the faith God has distributed to each of you. Y'all remember I said that's for we are all Abraham's descendants. Everybody has a grace gift. In, even in Man to Man, they had a chart one time where they uh, had a study. I don't know if it was a form or something where you can look and see what your grace gift is. But God is not going to bring you into the family and you're not having something. You know what I'm saying? I, I think that me being in my earthly family, if you will, I saw love. I saw how to love people. And it, modern, it, it modeled Christ. That's why I say nobody can beat me loving you. I love each and every one of you. But God gives a, a gift, a grace gift. Do you hear me? I appreciate you reading that. But God puts that faith in our hearts and he enables us to believe. Then it's up to us. Miss Angel, it's up to us to do the believing. You hear me, Sister Bird? We got to do something. You know, if you tell me you can't believe, I just, I, 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 just, I just don't believe that. You can if you wish to. Because faith is simply taking God at his word and responding to his promises in his word. Because there are many promises there. Y'all know all the promises you, can, you, can, you see in God's word? Let me ask you, does anybody know what a promise of God is? I'm going to ask you. I'm just going to ask you. Anybody raise your hand if you know what a promise of God's word is? Or is that just something you say that God has promises? Hold on one second, Mike, come up. If anybody else have one, I want you to, uh, to say it. Come on. He says uh, in Matthew, Lo, and lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the world. Amen. Come on, Miss Angel, you better teach it. Now, Miss Angel, is that a promise? Do you, is that something you claim, or I, maybe he I, might be with you? On me? a daily basis. I know he walks with me, even come in on. my dark valleys. That's another promise. I just threw that one in. Just throw it in. We, she said, wait, there's more. I'm going to give you another. No, What'd you say? That, no, that's... <laughs> And yea, though I walk through the dark valleys, I will fear no evil, for thou art with thou me, with your me. rod, your staff, they comfort me. Besides, you can take that to the bank, huh? Mm -hmm. 
I, I, I like the one that, uh, anybody else have one? I want to make sure I give everybody a chance. Brother Banks got one. Hold on, Brother Banks. He promised, he promised never to leave us. He'll stick closer than any brother. Come on, Amen. preach that thing. Anybody else have everything? I just want to make sure y'all know what promises of God are. He said, I'm going away and prepare a place for you, and where I am, you will be also. Come on! <laughs> Kenny, Christian education is a beast, brother. <laughs> Anybody else got anything else? Hey, I, I love the one, when I'm going through something, I've been going through, going through some things, but Ray, he said, cast your cares. Because he cares for you. Because if you have a father, no child is going to, no father is going to see his child suffering. Suffering. So it's probably, especially if he's lined up. You can't live any kind of dirty way. But if you lined up, he's not going to see you suffering. He cares for you. And in Psalms, I say these all the time over the pulpit because they're not cliche to me. He said, when you call him, he'll incline his ear. Brother Black, he came to see about it. Dark nights. He came because I was down. I was crying and I walked. I read his word and I felt up because he came to see about me. And nobody else could do when Nothing else could help. His love lifted me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Give the Lord a hand clap of praise. His promises in his word. There are many promises there. You just have to believe. I'm going to go through this last one, and I'm going to finish the others next week. Is that okay? All right. The next one is, the first one was strong faith is received as a grace gift of God. Did y'all get all that down? And since I have time, I'm going to make sure y'all jot down the thing I told y'all. Remember I told y'all to write down? Did y'all write down? Grace is the unmarried. So I'm going to give y'all a test. What did I say? Grace is what? Attention. That's all right. <laughs> Hallelujah. Y'all read it one more time. Grace is the un favor. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God is so good. The next one is specifically in 416, and we're going to have some other scriptures, and we'll go from there. Um, strong the next one is strong faith releases God's grace. Strong faith releases God's grace. I used to listen to Aunt Margaret up here singing on Fifth Sundays, and I remember her and Uncle Herbert singing, He's Truly Grateful. Ain't that the song, Truly Grateful? She said, as long as, you, with this, as long as you talk, I'm going to stay on my knees. You know what I'm saying? That's faith. This problem, they were not singing that song with conviction because we ain't got nothing else to do. <laughs> it sounds like somebody who's seen something and they had unlocked the grace of God. They knew what God had done. God had been graceful to them. He has been faithful to them. But you can't do that. You know what I'm saying? Uh, uh, we have a guy who came and got baptized um, at Southwest, uh, Brother Hillman. Uh, he said that my mom and them made me get baptized. But he said, hey, Margaret, your baby, Jerry, got baptized. But they did it the first time because they had to. You know, I wanted to come back this probably because I was up there. And when I was five, I was like, oh, no, I'm not going to do it. OK, I'll do it. All right. <laughs> that don't sound like conviction, right? <laughs> yeah, I know. We're going to laugh a little bit, too. We're going to stay in the word. <laughs> but you unlock the grace of God. Romans 4 and 16, remember that scripture. Uh, Romans 4 and 16. Uh, <laughs> uh, Therefore the promise comes by faith so that it may be grace and may be guaranteed to all Abraham's offspring, not only to those who are of the law, but also to do those who have the faith of Abraham. He is the father of all. I said number two is strong faith releases God's grace. If you look at that scripture, you'll see that the promise was based on faith. 
And I'm going to go back over this one a little bit next week so I can bring us back. If you remember, the law was for the children of Israel, remember? That's who it was for. You remember when Moses came down, it was not for the Gentiles and everyone. We knew and God foreknew what was going to happen and what was going to happen, but we didn't know. But the promise of faith is a gift to all Abraham's descendants, not the law, not to just those who believe the law. He's a spiritual father to all of us who believe. You hear me? We're saved by grace and faith links us up to that grace. It's the key. It's the key that unlocks the door. Key. You can come knock on my door or whatever else and open the door, but like this song, I hear you knocking, but you can't get in. You can't open it, just Charles, unless what? You have the key. You have the key. There was a theologian, I already talked to you about it. His name was, who unfortunately died this year, Frankie Beverly. And he had a very popular song he wrote in 1983. And it was called uh, Love is the Key. And that thing that he says, the words of love is the key to life and the things that make it right. Then he goes on to say, if you really want to be free, it's the key in faith. Uh, 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 it's the key. It's the thing that unlocks a lot of good things. That's what faith is. Do you hear me? When I was a kid, I used to play video games. They got a lot of more sophisticated video games, but we played Mario Brothers and all those games. Uh, Michael, I think y'all was right behind us. We used to go up to Timmy Chan's right down on MLK. You know, after I winged in after church, we'd be up there. You better come on back. We're playing Meech's Pac-Man and everything for hours. Well, them boys, we didn't have cell phones. So we was like, they'll be okay. But we was up there playing those games. And, and, and all those games, there were things that could be unlocked. Brother Banks, there was unlocked. If you did certain things, it could be unlocked. You hear me? Unlike there are things that can be unlocked on games today on those more expensive games that they're too rich for my blood, Miss Angel. But there are ways that you can unlock some things. That's what faith is. You know, uh, let me tell you something. There was one game. Anybody ever remember, if you, by show of hands, y'all, so it's not just me dating myself. Anybody remember Pac-Man? Thank you, Jesus, y'all. And if you're, not, if you're not being honest, thanks for making me look all right. <laughs> Pac-Man, that was a power pellet. You hear me? That was a, you remember? That was a power pellet that you could take that and re released unmatched power. You could go all over that board. You could eat anything. You could do anything. Nothing could touch you. If you unlocked, uh, locked him by getting that power pellet, you know, you can go anywhere. It was unmatched and unchecked power. You know, that's how faith is. It unlocks the grace to us. It unlocks it to us. You hear me? The only way grace can ever operate is through faith. You got to have it. By the way, you can't come in here talking about you believe in God and, and all this stuff and you're just talking. You know, we're going to get through the Jesus paid for your sins on the cross. But that doesn't mean absolutely no good until you put your faith where God put your sins upon Jesus Christ. You hear me? Grace is, 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 grace is released by the faith. I tell you, it's the key. But the problem is when you have unbelief, it holds your grace a prisoner. Brother Black, you holding it back. <laughs> you know, uh, 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 uh. I'm not going to do that. But let me tell you for the sake of time, you can't have confidence in your own goodness. If you leave it up to yourself, you'll never know. You'll leave it up to yourself. never see. If you think you can earn heaven by your good works, you're in trouble. Because let me tell you something, you're wondering what's the line of demarcation. Hey, Morgan, I'm, I, 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 in my mind, and I'm not ashamed to tell you, because I, I like to tell people, I, I, Brother Ray, I know how good God is, but I did so much when I was a little kid. I would be like, man, did I do enough to offset all of that? <laughs> did I do enough? I think I did enough. Did I preach enough sermons? That's just too much. I can't do the math to know if I've done enough. I have to have faith that when I leave this place and I form a pastor and say, I know where I'll be when I get to where I'm going. But let me tell you something. Faith is a game changer. It's a game changer. It can change your life. It's probably, I've seen so many people who have accepted Christ, but yet they're wallowing around in the muck, just wondering why am I not doing better? I know 
a, a person, I know a brother, a, a person uh, that they're telling me all the time, when is my ship going to come in? God bless them, healthy kids, a house, but they want to be in River Oaks. When is my ship going to come in? Do you realize you got a yacht? God is blessing you, those kids healthy. You got a reasonable portion of the health. You're able to pay your bills. God is good. All the time and all the time, he's good. You can't just make that statement. You got to know it in your heart. And when you understand that it's all by God's grace, then you can be sure. Let me tell you something. Then, you know what? You know the kids say that that hit a little different, Brother Banks. And then the words, amazing grace. How sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me has a new meaning to you. <laughs> I once was lost, but now I'm found. <laughs> was blind, but now I feel. That hits different in your life. When you know about the grace, unlock it with your faith. And you know that you're saved and you don't have to wander and worry anymore. Again. Have I done enough? I messed up last night. Do I have to do two more things? You know, I know for a fact, my mom, my brother, I, they accepted Christ in their life and nothing can pull you from the arms of Christ. I know they're resting in the bosom of Abraham and I know where I'll be because I got faith in something greater than myself. And I know when God calls me home to sleep the long sleep of death, I know where I'll be. God bless you this day. Faith is the key. I appreciate y'all for being here today. And these things that I do, I don't try to come up with a message or a sermon or anything like this. I want to make sure with us and our Christian education, someone came in here they were so excited, Sister Bird, to see these people sitting in here for Bible study. That means there's a thirst. They said, there's the deer pants after in Psalms. They, it, I just see a thirst. And that's only going to make us stronger soldiers for the Lord. Not for us, not for our church, but stronger soldiers for the Lord. So I just ask you to just keep standing. Have the faith. I know many of you going through something. That's why I say every Sunday in the waiting room, Brother Blair, I know what he's done for me. He's just done so much for me. And if I know he did it for me, he can do it for you. So uh, we want to pray right now. And uh, Brother Ray, I'm going to ask you to come pray for us. We want to pray for our church and everything. I want y'all as a church to have the faith that God is going to be with us, y'all. We've seen his works already. Have we seen it? We've seen it. Brother Blair talks to me all the time. Brother Blair, I can't even say half of what you said to me, but you said stand strong. You talk to me what God will do. And faith is like that power Brother Blair, I'll never forget, but I'll turn it over, y'all. You know, black preachers, they say they got full closing, so let me get to you. <laughs> Brother, Brother Blair said, and man to man, i never forget. Brother Blair said something so profound. He said that, but when we were just getting cell phones, Brother Blair said that, he said if you have Verizon or whatever it is, whatever cell phone you have, it's going to die. But he said sometimes you got to plug it to the source. You got to plug it to the source. Sister Williams, you got to plug it to the source. It ain't just going to come to you. So that's what we'll do. And then we'll, we, we can do better. We can bless. We can pray for others and know that God is in us. We have people that are difficult. We can pray for everybody in our church. Not people who believe that if we're a diverse body, everybody's not going to agree with us. But guess what? It's not a mortal sin because Miss Angel don't agree with me. It's okay. We can have different opinions. But the one common denominator we have is Jesus Christ. That's the audience. That's who we're trying to make happy as a body of believers. And if we stick together and we have the faith, y'all ain't no telling what we can do. 56, the next 56 years, here we come. Hallelujah. That's what's going to happen. So I'm going to get out of the way. Kenny, have I forgotten anything? Okay, well, we're going to pray for each other. We have the Bible study tonight uh, for the, um, with Dean Haywood to be there. So if you're interested, feel free to come. That's at 7 o'clock. I want to make sure, again, as your pastor, that, uh, uh, that we're educated, that we know that we can talk to other people and we're strong. Amen?